Welcome to the gap. This is gap. They should have never gave you platform. Yeah. Oh, 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 breaking tools. Yeah. Breaking. Breaking tools. Yeah. Ooh. Here's the gap. Wow. We back. Yeah. Here's the gap. Yeah. We back. Ooh, y'all like that little rendition? Oh, not so much. Well, I don't give a damn. <laughs> What's good with y'all out there? This is another episode of The Gap. I'm your lovely or hated host, Kamal, a.k.a. The Black Seinfeld, a.k.a. Magic X. And since I have a sector of my audience that's the best, that shows love and appreciation for your breath, that's my fam. We don't always agree, but when we disagree, we do it with respect. What should y'all be doing right now? Well, there you go. Also, if they watching, at least they learning. And I appreciate some of y'all, from the ugly to the beautiful and to the in-betweeners. Now, the other sector of my audience, suspected WSs, coons, anti-black motherfuckers, uh, you trolls and haters. What should y'all be doing right now? That that's right. My 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 fam sector of the audience is telling y'all this too. E A D. Now, with that being said, the two been around since 05. I don't need to tell y'all what to do to get the video or the channel booming. But just like the rest of the tubers say, I'ma say the same thing. Like a sub, sub a share, share a comment, comment a like. Y'all know what to do. Sorry, y'all goddamn. I know the people that's listening like, God damn it, come on, burping in my ear. I apologize. But look it. You know, too, been around since 05. You feel me? I already tell you, you're already doing it. Like a sub. Sub a share. Share a comment. Comment a like. Y'all know what to do. Some of y'all smart out there. You feel me? Now, for my potters, I'm on Apple Podcasts. I'm on Spotify. And I am on, uh, what's the other goddamn podcast that people don't really be on? I, I mean, some people. iHeartRadio. You feel me? On all those platforms, all you got to do is type in The Gab or Kamal Johnson Network, and bam, I'll pop right up, okay? Also, I'd like to thank my lovely sponsor, First Place Losers. The link to the shop going to be in the description below. Y'all go check out the fire-ass garments made out of 100% Egyptian cotton. I guarantee a boucho sex appeal up by, let's say, uh, 42%. And look here, if it look good on me, it's going to look magnificent on y'all, all right? Now, let's hop right into the topic. Y'all heard me singing it earlier. You feel me? Should I, should I bring it in with some singing? N- no. Oh, okay. Jesus Christ. They always break their tools. I know some of y'all is like, what the? What you mean tools? You talking about pro tools? No. I'll talk about the alleged white supremacists like Ben Shapiro, Elon Musk. Their tools is uh, like Candace Owens, Don Lemon. They break them when they don't need them no more. Bootlegging never prevails. The, 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 the cooning never is a good long-term play, as we can see here. And they always break their tools when they're done with them. Every time. When last time you heard from Tim Scott? Oh my God! Donald Trump saw him. Ooh, God damn, you coming in a lot. Uh, break him. Broke the tool. You ain't heard of Tim Scott ever since. Tim Scott got replaced by Mark Robinson. Another tool that they will they will break eventually. They always break their tools. Every time. Candace Owens over here. Man, ain't no way Ben Shapiro can fire my ass. Ain't no way. Mm, 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 mm. It wasn't even a full day. Man, she went to sleep, woke up to what? They canned me from my, my Daily Wire. Don Lemon. Oh, yeah, you know what I mean? They asked me on X, so I'm going to interview Elon Musk in the end. There ain't no way he'll get rid of me. Watch the tough questions I ask. Man, Elon Musk fired. You feel me? Um, 
ended partnership, whatever, fire, dudes. Elon Musk didn't even get to his goddamn car before he did that. Right after the interview, he on the phone. Hey, we got to get rid of Don Lemon. He ain't acting like the tool that we want him to be. Out of here. And then it's another segment I might bring into probably next week or a week after. But as soon as these tools get broken, they get real pro-black, don't they? They get blackity black. They get the, oh my God, I have so much concern for the black community. I'm here for y'all. Come on, embrace me back, baby. Nah, go to y'all white zaddies. Oh, you can't. Oh, you lost that sector of your audience. Oh, because they didn't like what y'all were saying or what y'all were doing. Oh. See y'all? Coonan ain't a long-term career, y'all. The max you could do with Coonan, you probably get five years out of it. You get a five-year deal, five-year contract. You feel me? You sign on the dotted line, you like, so I gotta buck, I gotta, I gotta buck my eyes, be very anti-black. Don't never talk about white supremacy or white zaddy. So this, this is in my contract. Five-year contract, huh? What happens after five years? Uh, We just break your ass, and then you just have no audience. So you better, the money that you get, you better invest or put it somewhere where you can. They never do. But uh, they be like, huh. Okay, I'm I'm a smart, I'm a, I'm a smart Negro. I'm going to outsmart this motherfucker. Sign on that line. Boom. Over. Done. Done so. After five years, they break your ass. Then after a couple years, you be like Amber Rosa. Remember her with Donald Trump? I ain't never heard from her again when she tried to come back. Tried to be all like, man, I was trying to get some intel for y'all, my black people. I was going covert. Covert, all right, huh? Now, you was trying to assimilate, and they kicked your ass out. Uh-huh. Yeah. Then they become broke. No money. Mm. 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 Kuna is not a long term career, y'all. Okay? You never prevail with licking a boot. You get all like gangrene in your mouth. You feel me? Teeth start falling out. You just become even more uglier. See, figuratively, you get you become uglier because now, now people look at you like, damn, you ain't you you ain't for your own people, your own kind. The people y'all licking the boot up, they be looking at you crazy too. Like, hold on, you way more anti-black than me, and you a black person. Mm. We gonna have to get rid of you soon enough once we finish using you up. You see what's happening with Candace Owens? Don Lemon. Want y'all to come together and make a show. Call it, call it how to speak Kundanese. What? Or what's another one? What would be better? I know I said on, on Twitter, I said uh Candace Lemons. The rise of the bootlick. What's another one? Don Owens. Um, um what should be after Don Owens? Don Owens, the the coon by the door. <laughs> you know about the spook next to it? Okay. That's another one. Um <laughs> Uncle <laughs> Uncle Lemon and Auntie Owens. They were always mm, no, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I was gonna say they will always lick the boot, but I got something better. I got something better. Um <laughs> Uncle Uncle Lemon and Auntie Owens. They will always be the coon that you need. Mm. Y'all put some in the goddamn comments too. What what is some show ideas and name ideas for these shows that we could give to Don Lemon and Candace Owens teaming up? You feel me? Hmm. The broken the broken toolers? I don't know. The 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 the, the names are endless. I want to hear some of y'all's. Mm-hmm. But yeah. 
that's why I wanted to bring up, you know. And another second down the line is like, man, these tools, every time they get broken, they want to be all pro black. And man, we ain't falling for that. Uh, but this is my thing. Um, the alleged white supremacists, they always break their tools. So if you Samboing, Cooning, Mammying, Tomming it up, it's kind of crazy because Uncle Tom. I haven't read the book, but when I heard Uncle Uncle Tom was the actual hero, it's kind of crazy. We'll change it up. If you ruckus in it up, you feel me? At the end of the day, when they feel that you're not spewing their message or saying the things that they want you to say or doing the things that they want you to do, you feel me? They will break your ass and leave you in despair. Okay? Broken tools, man. Mm. Anything about broken tools, they're useless! Okay? And this is my last thing I'm going to say about this topic. Coonan is not a long-term career. All right, y'all. Y'all know what segment we about to get into. We about to get into the sad Sass. segment. And yes, I'm about to talk about this movie right here. This is a classic, you feel me? Uh, Hollywood Shuffle. And it kind of it kind of goes along with the topic, you feel me? Because Hollywood Shuffle, people well, it, it, depicting the cooning and sandbowing and certain depiction of how they think black people should act. And then and they didn't act in that way. They just wouldn't, you know, cut them off. Or if they did, they'd just be like, well, it ain't doing it the way we want it. We break the tools. Bam, we're going to go to another. Another person, another black person. It's crazy. Crazy. You feel me? Crazy how this Hollywood Shuffle movie aligns with the topic of today. But I saw this on Apple TV. You feel me? I'm going to give you the outstanding cast. Because, God damn, this was a magnificent cast. Uh, also, I'm going to give you the stats. And I'm going to give you the plot of the movie. Okay? Let me uh, give you the stats first. You feel me? So, I need to be gave it a 6.9. Rotten Tomatoes gave it an 88%. And the people, golly, 68%? Nah, IMDb and the people, f*** <laughs> y'all. Uh-uh. Ron Tomatoes, y'all got this right. I, I thought this was a smooth 90 plus. You feel me? This was really good. And it was giving me a film like, ooh, oh, oh, it was tugging at me. And I'm like, damn, I see some of this today. Wow. But see, it's good to watch this movie because then it's like, you know, you really, the way, and I'm, I'm about to get into the plot. My bad. Let me get a cast first, first of all. Outstanding cast. Magnificent. All right. Legend. Robert Townsend. Okay. He played Bobby. All right. Keenan Ivan Waynes. Legend. You feel me? He played Donald. You feel me? That Damon Waynes. He was uh, one of the bodyguards. That Helen Martin. You feel me? Legend. Uh, Bobby's uh, grandmother. You feel me? Oh, they had more. You feel me? R.I.P. John Witherspoon. Legend. All these people I'm naming is legends. He played Mr. Jones. Ah, oh, they had the legend. Paul Mooney. R.I.P. this brother. Man, I really wanted to meet Paul Mooney, too. That's one person I would want to meet. You feel me? He played the president of the people that was, like, kind of protesting. People being like Uncle Tom's and Sambo's within uh, Hollywood. Well, now I'm getting into the plot. Basically, the plot of this movie is Robert Townsend. I'm going to just call him by the actual name. I ain't even call him by the character. You know what? I shouldn't do that. Let me be professional. Bobby, who was trying to get into Hollywood. He was trying to get a role for movies and stuff like that. And he was noticing, like, you know, a lot of the roles that they want Depicted is just cooning, sandboing, pimps, hoes, all types of ish like that. Very degrading towards black people. But it was like, he, he was kind of kind of blinded by like the whole thing where it's like, you know, I got to get this role. You feel me? I got to get these roles. Then he would encounter people like, there's one dude that was like, hey, brother, you sure don't want to get this role. This degrading the black people. You know what I mean? Fight the power. Then they call his name. Uh, 
Jenkins James, I, I don't know what brand name was, but Jenkins James, you're up next to play a tap dancing coon hero. You're like coon hero? How that's an oxymoron. They just you can't be a coon in a hero. All right, and bro was like, <laughs> they called me. All right, it's like the person that tried to down you of trying to get something, then they the ones gonna get it. Yeah, this. Then you had like um. Uh, Bobby had these like elaborate like kind of either daydreams or dreams or like some scenarios and it's like he was just showing how like man these roles that they trying to give to black people be very degrading like with the women they had to be hoes or they had to be very stupid they had one where like bro was like considered the 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 man dingo bro and he had like all the women draped on him and he ended up helping out the white woman like it was that type of ish. And then it was also, they had, we were like, the director and producer or whatever were white, and they were trying to tell black people how to act black what? and promote that. Don't that sound eerily familiar? Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Sexy Red, Suviana, Lord Jesus. Mark Robinson, Cooney, Kenneth Owen, Bootlegging, <laughs> Don Lemon, Can't Get Rid of His Zaddy, White. <laughs> it's the same ish. They're promoting what they think is what is black. But see, we are, and this also is shown in the movie where. There are roles and there are people out here that are black, black people, black Americans, that's upholding us in a great light, showing us as like, we're not just degenerate thugs and hoes and hooligans and all that other bullshit that they want to spew on us. Nah, we doctors, lawyers, fathers, mothers, brothers, sisters, accountants, all that good jazz. All right, you feel me? So, um, yeah, you know, Bobby, you was talking to his family, and his grandma, uh, his grandmother was telling him like, "Bro, I don't really want you to be acting because they're gonna have you playing one of them bullshit roles as like a pimp or something." Which they did. They had him as a pimp in one of the roles. The role he got, he's like, <laughs> "Look in here, baby." I want us to come around and help out my brother right here. You feel me? And then we gonna pour out some more liquor as we toast to some Hennessy. Man, his grandma gave him like, oh lord. His, His younger brother wrote Wrote on the papers like, yeah, man, Bobby's my hero. He's trying to do the right thing, blah, blah. His brother saw him playing that role. You could see the disappointment in his face. Then after a while, Bobby was like, you know what? I can't even do this, man. Man, I can't do this. All the daydreaming he was dreaming was like, man, they trying to have me do the, the coon nigga role. Golly. He broke out and he was like, and his grandmother told him something and it was like, it was, it was, and I'm hopping around. I'm going from end beginning. You feel me? I'm just trying to give more of the essence of the movie. Grandmother's one was like, you know, it's always work at the post office. And Bobby started thinking his thinking cap. He was like, wait a minute. How about I, I get a role acting as a postman telling my people, hey man, come work at the post office. Brilliant. You feel me? Show the show the uh show the black man in a a positive light. He didn't have me no pimp, no thug, no slick talking motherfucker. You feel me? Yeah, that was great. And it's touched on the issue that I always talk about: the imagery of us as black people is very important, and that's what was showed in Hollywood Shuffle. It also showed like in Hollywood they want you to play. These certain roles, what they think is black, and it ain't really black. You feel me? 
they were making fun of it. It was like satire of that. You feel me? I, I, not, man, I, I try my damnness not to laugh, but it's it's just Robert Townsend, bro. When he played the when he the daydreaming and he was playing a role where he was the bubbling it is it it made no sense to scene, but he got up it like he was like oh man it's on my my mess my boss right here none. I don't know how to tell it to you, man. When we go around the corner, we going to have some fancy you know, spoon. Man's going to be there for us. I'm like, God damn. That's how they really want a servant. A dumb, a dumb servant. Man. But the way, the way Robert Townsend delivered that, I was laughing my ass off. I was like, God damn it. This is hilarious. Oh, my Lord. And then, bro, like, John Witherspoon character, he was the owner of the spot that Bobby uh worked at. He worked at this hot dog spot or whatever, and he was the owner, and he was telling them, like, bro, you better you know, stop playing. Get your ass to work, man. And then, like, it also showed that, like, because it's, um, and I think, uh, Kenan, Kenan Ivor Ways played uh, his co-worker, Donald, and he had another co-worker, and they were like, they were showing the whole thing of dream killers, where like the, the black men, some black men that might be around you are dream killers and haters, and it's like they talk all that ish, but in reality, they will really want your spot. There's a lot of that going on, too. So you had to go through that, and it's like, man, bro, you know, but I think the funniest part with John Witherspoon was like man, when he became like down and out and he had a bunch of shoes like he went crazy over trying to sell whole cakes like hilarious man. golly man this was so hilarious but it had such a strong message man I'm just thinking, like, cause it's very this this shit's very nostalgic. Like, I'd never seen this till till a couple of days ago, but you know what I mean. I'm just like, damn, they're able to depict all the BS that's going on in the society of that time, which a lot of that shit's happening now. But they did it in a very funny way. It wasn't very cheesy. It wasn't very like, oh, really cringy or whatever. It wasn't like that. And at the end of the day. They actually showed that, yo, actually, black people, black Americans, we actually don't have to do the BS that they have trying to have us do. We could do it our own way. And it showed, like, you know, uh, and I'm going to review this movie, too, Meteor Man. I'm going to re- review that down the line. But I like how he showed, like, he was like, yo, we want to play characters that superheroes and stuff like this. And then he came out with a black superhero movie, Meteor Man. That's why Robert Townsend is a goddamn legend. And at the same time, it was so tight that it's like, he's showing all this, right? Then he's showing us like, yo, we don't have to do it like this. We can do it like this. As he is the director, executive producer of the films. Brilliant. Brilliant. With a damn near all black cast. Of excellence. See what he did there? Man. I'd love to meet, meet you, brother. I know you probably ain't gonna watch this right now, down the line, though, you know, you feel me? But I would love to meet uh, Robert Townsend, man. And I'm gonna review some more Robert Townsend movies, for real. You know what I mean? So, uh, like I said, one, like, the main message of this also it showed that because it showed the other people that got the spots that were basically Sambo and Coonan. Then you saw how like down the line they weren't doing too good. You feel me? It also showed that look it Coonan ain't a long term career. Okay, it showed that. So I thoroughly enjoyed this movie. I like the messaging. I like the uh, the actors. You feel me? They they played their role tremendously. It was funny. Had a great message. Um, you feel me? And at the same time, it showed like black excellence. You feel me? 
Okay. With that being said, this is a Hollywood shuffle. Saw this on saw this on Apple TV. I recommend go watching it, especially if you're a black American and a black person. It'll start helping you see this kind of understand the psyche of things that's going on as of today. You feel me? Incredible. All right, y'all. Y'all know what time it is, right? It is meantime. And I got some juicy memes for y'all. And oh my God. Wow. Hey, some of y'all be finding some pictures of Candace Owens, yo, and they do not be favorable of Candace Owens. I'll be like, wow. This is one of them. Another one's when she had the scar. You feel me? And she was talking about the the disease that she had, but she didn't state the name of the disease or nothing. Look like she got she looked like she had some some anyway. Uh above her says white guilt. It is not trendy or cute to hate other white people. Yeah. That's how you was, Candace Owens. In 2023. Now all of a sudden, 2024, you black, you did black, black, black. You concerned about black America and black people? Hmm. You're right. <laughs> the face. Uh, and I always felt this way. I actually couldn't tell the two difference of these two two brothers until like uh until really probably like six months ago. <laughs> and as you can see, it's fried. And it reads, "Not sure if T.J. Holmes or Don Lemon." Yeah, I couldn't tell. You feel me, man? Now I could tell, you know, T.J. Holmes, he like white women. And Don Lemon, he like white men. But they virtually look the same. That's it. (laughs) Oh, man. They doppelgangers, for real. For real. Dead ass. Mm. (laughs) Oh, my goodness. What cartoon is this from? I don't know what cartoon this is from, but somebody put the head of Candace Owens on this cartoon. You know, it had the buttons. Oh, this might be Inspector Gadget. This could be Inspector Gadget. I could be wrong, but this could be Inspector Gadget. But it got her at the bottom. It got the sweating like, whoo, which button I'm going to choose. And it got her on the left button. It says, racism is no longer a problem in America. The other button. The Democratic Party is racist and wants blacks to fail. I mean, mean the one on the right is is actually, I say allegedly true. The one on the left is bullshit. But which one would Candace choose? Find out next time on the next episode of Candace Owens. Cooning into the top. (laughs) to the top oh my god wow oh man what button y'all think she chose i'm gonna let y'all decide all right y'all we're coming to the end of the show i appreciate y'all for sticking around and tuning in to another episode of the gab i'm your lovely or haiti host kamal aka the black seinfeld aka magic x and since i have a Certain sector of my audience that's the best, that shows love and appreciation for your breath, is my fam. We don't always agree, but when we disagree, we do it with respect. What should y'all be doing right now? Well, what y'all waiting for? Now, if they watching, at least they learning. And I appreciate some of y'all, from the ugly to the beautiful and to the in-betweeners. Now... For my damn tubers. The tube been around since 05. I don't need to tell y'all what to do to get the video or the channel booming. But just like the rest of the tubers say, I'm going to say the same thing. 
Like a sub. Sub a share. Share a comment. Comment a like. Y'all know what to do. Some of y'all smart out there, you feel me? Oh, and some of y'all probably recognize, like, I didn't address my hating sector of the audience. Because sometimes I just ain't going to address they weak asses. Yeah, okay, but... <laughs> For my potters, I'm on Apple Podcasts, I'm on iHeartRadio, and I'm on Spotify. Across all those platforms, all you gotta do is type in The Gap or Kamal Johnson Network, and bam, I pop right up, okay? i also like to thank my lovely sponsor, First Place Losers. The link to the shop gonna be in the description below. Y'all go check out the fire-ass garments made out of 100% Egyptian cotton. I guarantee it boosts your sex appeal up by, let's say, uh, 35%. And look here. If it look good on me, it's going to look magnificent on y'all. All right. And with that being said, y'all have a good day, good evening, good whenever it is y'all consuming this content. That's all I got to say. Oh, and Kuna is not a long-term career. I'm out, y'all. Hey, I think that show, uh, Candid Lemons, The Rise of the Bootlick, and hey, that might take off. Hey, if y'all do that intro, I want my goddamn credit, and I want my piece of the damn pie. Okay? This was good. This was good.